Hello everyone. Welcome to AI Anytime channel. In this video, we're going to look at a multi-agent framework named Tiny Troop. It's a persona-based agentic framework by Microsoft. I really found it interesting and I wanted to cover this framework in this video that how you can, you know, simulate different personas while building multi-agentic system. Nowadays, if you are looking in the gen ai space people are trying to build you know digital employees you know or virtual employees whatever you call it and those are all based on agent workflows so how we can you know not only rely on task execution like other frameworks screw ai and uh, auto gpt they provide task based executions how we can bring persona into it right a very different approach a multifaceted approach where you can simulate multiple personas you know while building a multi agentic framework so microsoft made a uh, agentic framework called tiny troop that's what i'm going to cover in this video so if you look at here on my screen i am on the github repository called tiny troop and it says llm powered multi agent persona simulation for imagination enhancement and business insight if you look at here that's that's what it says and it's an MIT license, so of course you can also contribute to the repository. And of course, you can also, you know, build on top of it and build SaaS, build vertical AI agents, based solutions, and so on and so forth. Now, if you look at here, it says multi-agent persona simulation for imagination, and they call it tiny troop, which more like a an environment, right? When an environment can be a can be an office, can be you know a, a set of communities and so on and so forth, based on the use cases that you are trying to implement. So if you come down, they have given some uh, huge, basically the domains or the industries, like for example, software development. So when you want to develop uh, a set of agents that can perform HDLC use cases. Then you need from design, development, testing, deployment, quality assurance, so on and so forth, right? So software testing, if you look at here, it says tiny troop can provide test input to systems like search engine, chatbots, co-pilots. Advertisement industry can evaluate digital ads offline with a simulated audience before spending money on them, right? Very important and critical for marketing aspect. Now you have you can take interviews, you know, you can create employees that will take interviews, interviews with your, you know, you, of course, with the agent that you can create can take interviews with your client, customer specific targets that you have, and they have brainstorming, so on and so forth, right? So fantastic. I really liked it. I've tested it out, performs really well. They have given a sample of notebooks to try it out as well. And I'm going to walk you through that, how you can use this a bit tricky to set it up, but we'll see that, you know, uh, right now. It's when Microsoft supports Azure OpenAI or OpenAI models. So if you see this, now how it's different from like Autogen and Crew AI, fundamentally there are differences because uh, Autogen and Crew AI like framework, they focus more on task execution and problem solving because at the end of the day, there are different uh, prompting techniques that plays a role of how the agents are basically designed and developed. So they they you know use different types of techniques like chain of thoughts or react and you know of course meta metacognitive prompting and so on and so forth. So tiny troop is a bit unique because it recreates a uh, social and business scenario from a more human and as I said earlier a multifaceted perspective and also very it also enables low cost low cost and high high speed trial and error in different business situations. Like for example, like they said, validating marketing strategies, virtual customer interviews, you can also take uh, evaluating advertisement copies and generating synthetic data. So it does all of it, right? And that's why I found it very interesting. And you need an open AI key to basically try it out. And if you are, the question is why, why should I use this, right? Because here you can define personas, which is I found it very important while you are building set of employees, which are basically, which are basically instructed by agent workflows, you know, to perform some tasks. Uh, it also, of course, supports multi-agent environment, you know, so it has, you know, business oriented use cases. So if you're really working in an enterprise, then these kind of frameworks are really important. And it provides it, it also has caching functionality and other other things as well. It's more like a game like simulations guide. Right? Think of it like that. Now to use this, okay, I'll show you what I have done here. Okay, so I'm in a VS code. 
I'm not going to, of course, write a lot of code, which is already available. They have given a lot of examples that you can go through. I'm just going to walk you through what you have to do. So if you look at here, I've created a virtual environment, first of all. And right now, if you want to use Tiny Troop, the installation that they recommend is not via Pipey. They recommend two different approaches. One is through Conda. So if you have Conda, you can install it. Or if you don't have uh, like Conda environment, then you can this then you should build it from the source. So you have to first clone the GitHub repository. So that's what I have done here. If you look at if you look at Tiny Troop, uh, I have a folder that I have ran. So let me show you. So this is the command that you have to do. You have to first clone git clone tiny troop. And once you clone this, you will find out a repository this like this, which is your tiny troop, which will have a bunch of subfolders and files, right? Now uh, once you do that, you're gonna just of course do CD inside it. So I CD tiny troop. You can see right now I'm inside the tiny troop folder. And then you do pip install. You know, high uh, pip install dot dot means that all the requirements, of course, that's coming from the pi project dot two ml because it has all the dependencies over here. So let me just go back and show you. So if you look at here, here, if you look at pi project dot two ml, you can find out. You know, uh, it's all down here the dependencies. So these are the dependencies that you need to deal with. I know, starting from pandas, pytest, OpenAI, tick token and they use llama index blah 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 and then you need all of this now once you do that you are set you know and i have installed python.env because i have kept my env keys here in that .env file that you see it over here make sure that .env file is within the same tiny true folder so you can see it over here and now i go back and then I have an app.py. So the app.py, this is where you write all the code. So you can see I have a file called app.py. Now let me walk you through what's happening here. No. Now in this, I have some imports. You can see the imports over here. And then I load the load.env and also my openai underscore API key. So I just get it from there. And now if you come down, they have, for example, they have tiny person factory. So how you basically do it, guys, you know, you first define, you know, you first give a bit of context, then define the, the, the define the uh, persona for the uh, behavior, you know, for that persona that you are selecting. So if you look at here, it says one of the largest banks in Brazil, full of bureaucracy and legacy systems. So it's related to FinTech, but you can take other use cases. Now, largest banks in Brazil, that's the one aspect. You know, one awaits, then the full of bureaucracy. I mean, there's a lot of bureaucracy that happens within the bank. So that's a problem, right? That's a problem. And then legacy systems, like the system that they use are really legacy, like they're a bit old, you know, that, that might not have the latest of prop, latest of technologies. Now, here we are generating a person. So if you look at here, the factory that we have in a slice, a variable, we are using generate person that will generate a person. So if you look at here, what it says, the vice president of one product innovation had a degree in engineering and an MBA in finance is facing a lot of pressure from the board of directors to fight off the competition from the fintechs. The, so if the bank is using a legacy system and they are full of bureaucracy, there are a lot of competitions in the market. So imagine the banks like State Bank, State Bank of India in India, and there are other banks with the modern banks that are coming up. You know, HDFC, ICACI, HDFC, I heard that like, I think it was among top five global banks now internationally, right? So I think, how can you compete? Now, if there's a vice president of product innovation who does all the innovation side, like work with the latest technologies like H2, H3 technologies within the bank, and his task is to, his role is to basically innovate with products, right? And now he has a lot of pressure. So how can this multi-agent system help the vice president to do better, you know, on the product innovation side. So let's see what it happens. It basically be in a slice customer dot mini bio. It generates some mini bio. I'll show you the outputs and the expect expectations, which is the cru crucial part of it. So if you look at here, it says he she is wealthy, very intelligent, ambitious, has a lot of connections in his her forties or fifty, depending on what gender it is. Tastes, likes to travel to other countries, either read books, collect art or play golf, 
enjoy only the best most expensive wines and food dislikes taxes and regulations other notable traits blah 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 okay deep knowledge of finance economics now what it does it creates a score justifications validate you pass all of these things like customer expectations max content let you can define it as well and i will go up and let me just go up you can see it over here so once you do that let me just go up here when you run it the python app.fi it gives a disclaimer it says tiny troop relies on ai models to generate content the ai models are not perfect and may produce inappropriate or inaccurate results there is a typo in the accurate accurate spelling that's fine for any serious or consequential use, please review the generated content before using it. So there's a disclaimer by Microsoft team. And then it looks for your config, blah, blah, blah. And these are your config. You can, of course, change this config if you want to use any other models. And now here, if you look at the logs, it's basically an interview with the target customer and with the people on the bank side that's through, through the agents. Now. If you come down, you'll find out a score that I'm interested to show you. If you look at here, this is the score, banker score 0 0.7 and banker justifications. So the banker is like the agent that we talked basically, Gabriel Almeida. Many qualities, Gabriel demonstrates many qualities. Uh, Gabriel Almeida is basically the client which we are talking to. Okay, and if you look at here, Gabriel demonstrates many qualities aligned with the expectations, such as being intelligent, ambitious, having a stable financial situation, has a deep knowledge of finance, blah, blah, blah. However, it does not fully meet the expectations of being wealthy. As he describes his financial situation as stable, but with concerns. Additionally, while he enjoys cooking and has a passion for hiking, he does not express a strong intent. So it gives, it gives you the banker score and banker justification. That's what's happening here. If you look at line number 52 and 53. Now, Customer dot think. So there are think, listen, and act. That's that's how the flow is. So if you look at here, it says, I'm now talking to a business and technology consultant to help me with my professional problems. Right? That's the one. And then the listen and act says, What would you say are your main problems today? Please be as specific as possible. And then you can pass maximum content length, other specs, specs so on and so forth. Can you elaborate on fintechs? If I could improve in one of these aspects to better compete, what would that be? Please give me more detail about that, blah, blah, blah. Now, if you look at the output, if you look at the output from here, yeah, if you look at here, user to Gabriel Almeida, hello, I would like, I would love to know you better. Could you reply to the following questions? What is your name? How old are you? Where were you born? And so on and so forth. And then basically it gives you, it acts. Gabriel, think. I need to respond to the question asked as to provide clear and concise answer. Now it gives you the answer. My name, name is Gabriel Almeida, 42, 42 years old. I was born in Brazil and currently work as the vice president of product innovation at one of the Brazil's largest banks. So Gabriel Almeida has been working as the VP in the bank. And then he talks to the user who are their clients, potential clients or whatever. And user says, thank you, blah, blah, blah. You know, and then Gabriel start, you know, start responding to the question that they've been asked over here you can see and all the outputs that you see it over here investing technology in traditional banks are there any specific and then keep going all the outputs that you find it out over here like an ai driven insight sounds like a good idea can you give me an example of how that could could help real customers it gives you the idea predictive analytics, AI driven insights. So basically what happens is here you create a persona based environment, you know, that basically have better understanding of business scenarios and not only like working as the task executions. So that's what, that's how the tiny troop basically helps you execute these kind of use cases. If you want to basically implement multi-agent agentic systems, which are persona based. So I just wanted to introduce you this framework, you know, a multi-agentic framework that probably you can utilize. You know, they have a lot of other examples. If you go to examples here, you can find out advertisement for TV. So for television, if you want to do an advertisement for television, how can you first validate that before spending money on that? It says online advertisement evaluation for televisions. You can see it over here. It says let's evaluate some online ads options to pick the best one so if you scroll down you know judging the best ad how do you judge the best ads you can see there are different ads the best tv of tomorrow lg 4k ultra 
So that's the first one. The full Samsung TV lineup. Okay. So for TV evaluations for TV, excuse me, this was the product is the television here. Okay. 55 inch TV, blah, blah, blah. So there are three different advertisements for televisions, the TV that they're selling. Now, what they say, let's build a request for our agent to pick the best ad. So there, of course, there should be some criteria or, you know, based on some parameters that it should select the ad. It says, can you evaluate these Bing ads for me? Which one convinces you more to buy their particular offering? Select only one. Please explain your reasoning based on your financial situations, background and personality. And it pass those as a variable. And if you keep looking, let's look at the output. Let's also have a reason for them to require a new TV or TV broken. We search for a new TV on Bing, blah, blah, blah. So I'll just go down. It says I have evaluated the ads and I find the LG 4K Ultra ad to be most convincing. The emphasis on cinematic picture quality and the exclusive A9 processor appeals to my analytical nature as a data scientist. Additionally, the free wall mounting, blah, blah, blah. So it's fantastic. And there are different thing that you can create. So if you run tiny person dot all agents, it will show all the agents which are in the list. So they have Lisa, the data scientist, they have testers as well, they have architects, they have builders. So you can take these default, pre-default or pre-configured personas, and then you can implement the use cases. Now, if you, if you see here how one now you can, if you are in the, if you're in the retail industry or if you are selling some digital products, how you can find out the best ad using AI. That's the use case over here. Now, it says try with agents generated on the fly, blah, blah, blah. And there are different people who are evaluating it. You can see. And then keep going. So that's one use case. The other use case can be create an ad for apartment. So we're not going to go into it because you already saw that. Like a similar thing. Interview is already done. Travel. You have something called product brainstorming. So if you go to product brainstorming, you can find out how you can use so the, you can see it, see it over here. And it, I was talking about Tiny World. Tiny World is nothing but the environment that Microsoft Tiny Troops say that they have an environment. They create an environment called Tiny World, and in this Tiny World, there are multiple agent, you know, that basically works and execute your tasks. If you look at here, it says Lisa, the data scientist, and it says Oscar, the architect, and Marcos, the physician. So if you are solving a healthcare problem, you know, where you want to take help of a pre-configured agent, which is very good in healthcare, then you can use Marcos, which is a physician, right? Fantastic, you know, I liked it. One more agentic framework, you can say it like that. You know, you have AutoGPT, we have Synth, we have, sorry, Spit, we have Langflow, we have uh, Langgraph, we have Swarm, you know, we have N number of agentic framework. It depends on what kind of use cases you are working with, and then you pick a right agent framework. So this is Tiny Troop, guys. I hope you uh, got a bit of idea that how you can use Tiny Troop in your agentic workflows. You know, if you are doing something with Tiny Troop, please let me know in the comment box. You can also reach out to me through my social media channels. Find those information on channel banner and channel about us. If you like the video, please hit the like icon. If you haven't subscribed the channel yet, please do subscribe the channel, guys. That motivates me to create more such videos. Thank you so much for watching. See you in the next one.